Good morning, you guys. I just want to share the word of God I'm reading in Psalms today. Um, Psalms 50. And I'm just going to start here so that you kind of get what it is that I'm reading. So Psalms 50, verse 13. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? What it was talking about previously was how... Before Jesus came, they would do sac like blood sacrifices of the animals. Like they would sacrifice a bull or sheep or goats. I don't know. They would do it in the olden days. And the Lord responds this way. So, so he's saying, like, am I going to drink the blood that you're sacrificing or, or eat the animals? And the Lord says, offer to God thanksgiving. And pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. So this is just a reminder for us to like not, we're not in the olden days where they had to sacrifice the animals. But what we're supposed to do is Give our thanks to honor our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this beautiful, fresh air, for the rain that you are providing for us, for blessing our lands and our animals, for blessing our home and our food and our water. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your hand covering over my family, Lord, for covering our finances that are we belong to you lord thank you jesus for your sacrifice that you paid it all for us that we are yours we are purchased and paid for and we belong to you lord like that's why a lot of times you'll hear me being so thankful to the lord even in the garden because everything it's the Lord Jesus that provided and gave to us. And so I just wanted to share this little tiny scripture with you guys today to remind you, because sometimes we don't even think of it. We can go a whole day or days or weeks or months without even thinking about the Lord or thanking him. But this is how we honor the Lord with thanksgiving in our hearts. God is a God of the heart. You might be able to fool people out there, but you can never fool the Lord ever. He knows every thought, every piece that's in your heart. And when you do things, he knows the reasons behind it. And um, just, just a reminder to have a thankful heart to honor your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys, there's some strawberries for me to harvest today. I brought a little cup. I don't know how many I'm going to get. But I do see some red throughout this little garden. And I don't want to waste any, so I'm going to pick them. So this is the earliest fruit bearing. Um, oh yeah, I see more red there. I see some red there, red there, red. So yeah, I'm going to pick what I can. And see all this up. Paris! Paris, come over here. Where are you? i got to keep an eye on Paris. Hold on. So I don't know if you guys can see, but there's still a lot of strawberries that need to finish growing and then turn red. And then there's some strawberries that are red that I that are not ripe enough yet, but it's going so well. And I got literally a first bowl full. I mean, what a blessing. I wish you could smell how sweet they smell. Oh, thank you, God. So let's just go over and check the cherry tree it is so full look at that the the leaf the branches are just oh there's my little chippy can you see him there by the fire pit he wants some food okay okay baby i'll feed you you guys look at i tell you every day you come out in the garden looks different it has growth and Look at this, it's either a pumpkin plant or the white cucumber, I'm not sure. But it's growing and it's gonna start growing up and being beautiful. I love it for the green leaves and vines, love it. But as you can see, 
our swing got rained on. It's going to rain still for the next few days. There's cocoa down there. But look at the potting plants. They're all coming to life. This grass really helped. It looks like hay now. You know what I mean? So the grass clippings, this is this is what they look like. Really nice and clean. But it's helping to keep moisture in and keep the sun off of the roots. But this one is the bubblegum pink. These are the purple ones. And they're gonna they're going to drape down over the summer and really, really add so much beauty. But that's the garden after a good rainstorm. Now that right there, the first thing that's growing on the archway, that's the kiwis. What a blessing. So pretty soon in a couple weeks I'll be able to haul the grapevines and start. Once you guide them to it, they'll hang right on and continue growing. So this right now doesn't look the best, but this is how a garden is at times. So the cardboard with the rain and everything it kind of lost its shape and is floppy but that's okay because what i'm going to do is when i get more grass clippings i'm going to fill in this whole middle row so that's another walkway we want to make sure we have a good walkway so i'll be pushing up that cardboard some and then i'll be filling this these two boxes like i said will be two new strawberry beds but it's going to be the strawberries that i was just picking today the beautiful, um, I don't know if I'll plant Kent's or Everbearing because they're both actually like 50s. I would never purchase the pink strawberry plants again because yes, their flowers are beautiful, but their fruit, mm -mm, it doesn't even compare to the real, like the authentic strawberries. And remember, that's genetically modified, so... But look at these healthy strawberries in the back. So this top row here is the row that we'll be harvesting this summer. This row here I've been diligently plucking all flowers off to not let it fruit. Next summer they'll be ready to give the big full fat strawberries. And then the section in the garden that's there, that's going to fill up this summer with runners. And I'm going to let it go wild. I'm going to let it grow and just fill in the space with the runners. And it wants to do that naturally, so I'm going to let it take care of itself. And, but what a beautiful blessing, eh, guys? I come out here, and all the plants that were planted in the ground, all these flowering bushes is going to attract bees and butterflies, maybe even hummingbird, I don't know. But they're very, very beautiful. I didn't get anything planted in the tires this year. I had been waiting for another gardener to share with me and she went through unexpected things so next year i'll be depending on i don't like depending on other people and unexpected things happen i'm not upset in any way but next year i will be taking that upon myself and planting my butternut squash and spaghetti squash in the house and then i'll be have it ready for summer to go into the garden i guess we got to look in here that's not and neither is that or that. Those are just little weeds. But you guys can see all the the peas growing. Look at all that greenery. I just planted them row by row, maybe too close to each other. I really don't know, but I'm happy. And I think it's going to go great. I'll put like a fence trellis in here so that they can climb upon. But look at that, eh? Isn't that great? Can you guys see our little chippy? Wait. Can you see him right there? He squawks out here for me to bring him food every day. Oh my lord. There's two of them. Oh my goodness. We have two chippies. Oh, pray tell, we have two. They're running after each other. Do you guys see them? They're playing. <laughs> it's okay, Paris. Yeah, so there's two chippies. Okay. I see. At least they're together. I wonder if they're going to have babies. Oh. Alright guys, so I know I didn't videotape me making this, but 
what I'm doing is making a homemade chicken pot pie without the crust. <coughs> um, instead of actually putting a biscuit crust, what I think I'm going to do is put cheese and bake it on broil. Like once all this is going to be made into a chicken pot pie and then I'll put it in a casserole dish, put cheese, shredded cheese, maybe a little bit of bacon on top and broil it. I think it's going to be good making my mouth water, but I used everything that we have here. So we have onions and carrots. I used one big potato. We had half of a roasted chicken in the fridge. We had half a can of peas, and then I used our spices. So cracked black pepper, pink Himalayan salt. Um, I used some dill, some oregano, and some summer savory. So, and then the juice, that's chicken broth, low sodium chicken broth. So I'm going to let this cook. And once it's like, once the vegetables are actually cooked, then I'm going to add in this cream of mushroom. If I would have had cream of chicken, would have been my choice, but this is what we have. So I'm using up what we have instead of having to go buy anything, but it's going to be so good because, um, excuse me, I just had a quick drink of apple juice and huh. anyway what I was gonna say is it's rainy it's damp it's cool so this is like the perfect hearty meal and it will give enough for leftovers for tomorrow and in this home we love our leftover really Coco really do you guys see her Paris is nowhere near her she was just letting Paris know that she's eating and don't go near the food <laughs> Literally, that's how it happens here. Oh my goodness, they just got done having some chicken. They eat very well, guys. She's eating her dry food. I have dry food out for them all the time, but that's the last thing they'll touch. So, yeah, I'm going to let this cook. Once it comes to a boil, then I'm going to turn it down to about five. And literally, I'll let it cook for 40 minutes, maybe. I don't know. Just till the potatoes and carrots are soft, because everything else is cooked I would have loved to have celery. Celery is such a nice additive to like a homemade stew, a soup, or um, a chicken pot pie, but I didn't have any. Same with corn. I do have a can of cream corn, but I didn't, I don't know, should I add that in here? Cream corn? I don't know. It, fe it feels like it's like not the right texture, but anyway, I think it's going to be good, and I'll show you guys once it's baked, but just thought I'd let you know. This is what's Cooking for supper tonight. Yum. You guys, I wish you could smell how unbelievably delicious this smells. You know when you walk into one of those cafes where they cook everything homemade and it just smells so divine in there? That's what it smells like right now in here. I've been letting it, it's on a slow boil and the spices and that is just really coming through. Okay, the potatoes are good. Let's get a thick carrot. Nope. So we still need to cook that for a little bit. And I'm hoping that while it's cooking, you see I don't have any lid on. I want as much of the chicken broth to evaporate as much as possible before I add in these. I decided I'm going to add in cream corn and use up my cream of mushroom soup. So that's what's going to go in here, but I really hope that that evaporates more and whatever doesn't, it's still going to be creamy. It's still going to be delicious. It smells incredible. It's just a beautiful, good, hearty, healthy meal full of vegetables and some protein perfect on days like today when it's just cool and you just want something warm and comfort food this is it right here what a blessing that's looking mighty good look at that just full yum Do you guys like cream corn? We love the peaches and cream corn on the cob, but it's really hard. I don't know. 
I find sometimes you think you're going to get a good corn on the cob, and then you get it home and cook it, and it's horrible. There's no taste, or it's too hard, or it just, it's hard to get a really good corn on the cob. But there is, when you find, when you get to find a really nice, soft, sweet corn on the cob, it's like, oh my lord, that makes the summer. Because to me, that's one of the summer foods that just, you know, corn on the cob, oh. Oh, that already looks a lot better. That looks divine. I think the spoon's... Oh, no. I thought the spoon was too big. I'm not a mushroom soup fan at all. I don't know. I think maybe my mom gave me this. I'm pretty sure. But anyway, it's perfect for... Anytime a recipe like this, or I want to do like a creamy soup, you know. So this is meant to be exactly like a favorite dish, which is a chicken pot pie. It's just comforting and flavorful. Ooh, look how that thickened up already. So I'm going to let it cook. Now that we got the cream corn and the cream of mushroom in here, I'm just going to, it's still cooking on low. I'm going to let it cook for about another half an hour just to let some more liquids evaporate, let it thicken up naturally. Um, I know that some people probably add cornstarch. If I have to, I will, but I would like to not have to add it. You know what I mean? But doesn't that look beautiful? You guys see that? I still want it to thicken up a little bit more, but like I said, I'll let it gently cook for another half an hour. Oh, if I could bottle up the smell and, and sell it, it would be a hit. Yum. So you guys, I started buying this kit. Whoa, sorry for the noise. Um, this here feeds four people a beautiful Caesar salad if you have other things to go with it. If you were just having salad, you would need... This would feed two people, but for four people, it feeds. So what I do, sorry, that was extra loud. That hurt my own ears. I just use half of the salad, and I make a big a big bowl like this. And this is the other half, because we did half yesterday for me and my husband. We both had Caesar salad. And then you still have enough in the fridge for the next day, which is great, because you get really double for your money is how I see it because it's doing two days worth of food. But all I do is I save, it always comes with two of the Caesar dressings, so I save one. I save half of the Parmesan, and I usually use half of this. It's just sourdough croutons and bacon bits, but I didn't have to use that yesterday, so I'm gonna use all of this today, the rest of the Parmesan, and a whole one of those. So I'm not gonna um, stir this up until my hubby's ready to eat, which will be shortly. But I want to show you guys, I actually burnt my tongue. <laughs> this turned out better than what I even expected. And you see, I didn't use any, no thickening agent at all, no flour, no cornstarch. I didn't have to. It just thickened up the perfect texture. If you want it that thicker, you could cook it longer or just add cornstarch, a little bit of cornstarch, and like put about a tablespoon of cornstarch in a cup with about, I don't know, two tablespoons of water, stir it, and then add it in. That would thicken it up even more, but this is just perfect. It's so flavorful. I'm telling you, I'm glad I added that can of cream corn in here and the cream of mushroom soup was the right choice because it just divine. So tonight for supper, this comforting dish, which is a 10 out of 10, and fresh Caesar salad. So I'm really excited. You guys, this hand soap, um, what is it? Dispenser, I guess, was like one of my best favorite finds. I love it. I love it. I love that it's a cute little gingerbread house. I love the colors. There we go. Now you can see it better. Look at that. It's absolutely incredible. Here, maybe you guys can have a better view of the soup. Look at that. 
Can you see the texture is so creamy? I don't want to blind Paris, but she is right there. She's right there waiting for food. But she already ate, so she might get a little bit of this tomorrow, but definitely no more food today. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. Yay! I was just sitting here getting supper. Supper's cooked, and it's just sitting there for a few minutes, but... I just got an upload notification from Caroline. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see today's video. Oh, wow. That's an amazing fire pit, isn't it? That's really nice. They're looking at fire pits. Nothing better than a nice bonfire in the summer. As long as it's very, very safe. Because I know it's been a very hot dry summer for a lot of people so just use caution oh my gosh that's the one they got i absolutely love that caroline wowie oh they're having their first fire tonight i'm so excited i hope she shows it that's beautiful oh ooh, coco's over there getting ready to play mm -hmm. See that little thing there? That's actually Chestnut's little toy. I, I kept all her toys, but Coco plays with it. She digs it out of the toy box and she goes around with the little mouse toy. <laughs> oh. Alrighty, it's time to put the salad here together because we're getting ready to eat. I'm so excited because I was waiting for this. I'm actually hungry. Are you hungry, boo? You know what it's like when you cook food and it smells so divine. It smells so good. And, whoa. And then you're waiting to eat. It's like, oh, torture. All right. Here's some yummies. Throw that on there. We won't waste any. And then one packet of the Caesar dressing. Ooh gonna be so flavorful yeah I wish I would have videotaped me making this the chicken pot pie dish right from the beginning it is so incredibly easy and it's literally I honestly got to say this it's literally probably the best soup that I've ever made hands down and like I said, it's so good that I will be making this again. I'm actually really excited to make it again. And I can't wait for my husband to do an honest taste test. Because he would say it's good even if it wasn't, though. He's always so thoughtful that, oh, my wife made the effort to cook and she's thinking of me. But I know when <laughs> food's good or not. So, But anyway, I have such a beautiful hubby that... He always takes my efforts of trying because I've made many of dishes before that actually failed that were not good and um, <laughs> and he never once complained. There's the salad portion. All right, so let's get the soup portion of it. It just thickened up to be absolutely beautiful. I mean, oh, the potatoes, the carrots, everything has such good flavor. And I already put pink, Himal pink Himalayan sea salt and cracked black pepper and then all the other spices. But look at that. Isn't that incredible? He's going to love it. I got a surprise brekkie cooking for my hubby, and the surprise is these honey barbecue chicken strips to go with his breakfast. Three fried eggs. The yolk itself is still runny, but all the white is fully cooked. And I got some pancakes for him, and he'll have a banana and some apple juice. You guys, the chicken pot pie soup I made last night was beyond amazing it was the best soup that i've ever made 
It was so good that I almost thought, did I really make this because that's how good it was? Even my husband said that was the best soup that I ever made. So I will do it again and I will share the recipe from start to finish. I wrote it down so that I don't mess up and like forget something, but it was the best chicken pot pie soup that we've ever had. All right, so I decided to peel a potato, chop it up roughly. We had half or a little bit less than half of a red onion. I put some dill and oregano. I'm gonna boil the potato and then I'm gonna fry it lightly in some butter with the onions and that's gonna finish off his breakfast there. Had to put on the air conditioner. It's actually, it's raining and dark outside, but it is mild today. It ain't cold today at all. So I was glad I got that soup done yesterday. But yeah, potatoes, these are gonna be on the grill, but we're gonna cook them first in the water and add them to breakfast.